What's good guys? I'm Vernon Kid here back again. How's everybody doing on your day? And today, what's today? It's Thursday, meaning new videos for the channel. Yeah, what are we reacting to today? So today, guys, we're gonna check out some more stuff from Watch Mojo. As you all know, Watch Mojo, they like to put up content every freaking day. They don't rest. Um and today, you know, some videos catch my eye and sometimes they don't, but when they do, I'm cool with it. So today, we're going to check out a video called Top 10 Superhero Shows That Deserve a Second Chance. I think this should be really good. I'm telling you right now, I can, I, I, I'm going to say this right now. Um, Wolverine the X-Men better be up on here. Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man should be up on here. Those are two Marvel show cartoons that were kind of the last great Marvel cartoons out that those two and Earth's Mightiest Heroes everything now that Marvel has put out has been just not interesting for me anymore they need to go back to their old ways yeah but I am interested in what if So let's check this out. Here we go. Don't mind me. Anybody want any popcorn? I'm just saying. All right, here we go. Now. Superheroes never stay dead for That's too right. long. Hey friends, I'm Ricky with Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 superhero TV shows that deserve a second chance. Glad you could make it. For this list, we're looking at gone but not forgotten superhero TV and web series that deserve a second run on the small screen. Whether they're live action or animated, these shows still have stories to tell, and here's Adrian to explain why. Shall we let our brothers Gargos. and sisters have all the fun? Number 10, Wolverine and the X-Men. Well, I tell you, but wow, so low? For reasons beyond my comprehension, Rogue just doesn't enjoy the thought of you leaving. Go figure. Marvel's mutants are no stranger to animated series, but 2009's brilliant cartoon failed to replicate the commercial success of X-Men the Animated Series. Pushing the perpetually angry Logan to the forefront, Wolverine and the X-Men was one of the more ambitious adaptations and launched with the X-Men disbanding. While there is more than enough action to entertain fans, Marvel's cartoon stands out due to a heavier focus on character development and a perfectly paced overarching storyline. Yep. Released around the time Disney purchased Marvel, the fact X-Men was owned by Fox put the brakes on a potential second season. I fear it's fucked up. our fight has only begun. It was a good show, man. People just need to get get from get off of the whole Number 9, Justice League really? Unlimited. Now where am I exactly? Among That had a, a good run. 1992 with Batman the animated series, the DCAU consists of 8 series split across a period lasting more than a decade. Revisiting the sequel to Justice League, a convincing argument could be made for Unlimited being the best of the bunch, but the universe's final cartoon lasted only 39 episodes. Incorporating a wide range of properties and home to some of DC's smartest writing, Justice League Unlimited could have comfortably continued for a couple more seasons. That was probably the dumbest episode right there. Unlimited comes with a solid ending and even provided Batman Beyond fans with closure. No, it didn't. There's still so much more to do. That was so bullshit. I, I hated that. Making Terry Bruce's son. I'm sorry. That was bad writing. Would you stay with me? Number eight. Green okay, Lantern Green Lantern, Lantern. Yes. Series. So I did like this show. Next, we find the Red Lanterns. Overshadowed by Young Justice, which Cartoon Network canceled around the same time, Green Lantern: The Animated Series followed Hal Jordan as a member of the Lantern Corps, but survived for only a single season before being shown the axe. Sadly, merchandise can play a crucial role in determining a cartoon's longevity, and this Green Lantern had a very limited run on shelves due to the stink left over by 2011's live-action flop. DC's first animated series dedicated to the superhero, Jordan's CGI adventures seemed doomed for failure despite the show's relatively high quality. Because we will hightail it out there and save me. I know how. You already have. Number 7, Gargoyles. <coughs> you are true. Really? Gargoyles? Uh, well... Dark, reflective, and Shakespearean, this classic 90s cartoon was a stark departure from Disney's typical animated TV productions. 
Opening with a glorious medieval battle in Scotland, the series sees our titular creatures betrayed and turned to stone, only to awaken a thousand years later in Manhattan. Aesthetically and tonally similar to Batman the Animated Series, Gargoyles explored genuinely somber themes and weaved elaborate story arcs that challenged both characters and viewers alike. Simply put, Gargoyles was too mature for Disney, and the cartoon struggled to amass a large enough fan base because you, of it. You got your damn mind! What a network like Netflix could do with Demona. Are you stupid or something like? My rightful place. That show was number six. The, the tick. tick. I'm the Tick. And I say unto you. I have not even watched this show yet. Stop your evil ways. One of the more recent shows on this list, this Amazon video web series was created by the man behind the comic book character, Ben Udland. Unfortunately, much like the short-lived mid-90s animated TV series and the early noughties live-action sitcom before it, this mid-2010s reboot was short-lived. Following the titular superhero and his sidekick Arthur as they discover who, or what, is behind the underworld and the city where they live, the tick was full of humor, action, and heart. Despite this, and a fresh Rotten Tomato score for both of its seasons, Amazon pulled the plug on the series before we could get a season 3. I have to watch this show. I have not watched it yet, and I'm a fan of five. That's right. Acular Spider-Man. I can sum it up in one glorious hyphenated word: Spider-Man. I am probably the last best Spider-Man Spider cartoon. Caught between a rock and a hard place, The Wall Crawler's wonderful cartoon was a casualty of Disney's acquisition of Marvel. Originally intended to last 65 episodes, the spectacular Spider-Man shot its final web after only 26. The cartoon's dismissal resulting from the legal trouble between Disney and Sony. Set in high school and based on the Amazing Spider-Man comics, this series actually took inspiration from various eras, and came across as a celebration of Spidey's entire mythos rather than a streamlined adaptation of one particular version. By 2012, Peter Parker was back on the air, but there was no replacing the spectacular Spider-Man. Don't apologize. I never do. Number four, Teen Titans. No, 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 this can stay going. I like Teen Titans, but I... If they, the only episodes I really I'm liked was when it got real serious. For any series. But going out on a cliffhanger... I don't like all that anime-like stuff. And I love anime, but... For younger viewers, Teen Titans blended gut-busting comedy with exhilarating action, and the season-long storylines proved engrossing enough to attract a wider audience. Various reasons have been given for the series' cancellation, but Teen Titans was popular enough to, at the very least, warrant a final season that ties yeah, up stupid any stupid Teen event. Titans Go While don't a make it any better. In its own right, Teen Titans deserves a better ending than Trouble in Tokyo. I present these medals to Tokyo's newest heroes, the Teen Titans! Number 3, Agent Carter. I'm just considering all the angles. Okay. Seems you have a lot of them. Now that's the Peggy Carter I need. It's not a superhero show per se, but Agent Carter does share continuity with and takes place in the MCU, both of which make it superhero adjacent. So that's good enough for us. Period piece set after World War II starring Hayley Atwell, Agent so Carter garnered almost nothing but glowing reviews. Unfortunately, Agent Carter's ratings did not reflect the show's quality. Though, as many have pointed out, most of the blame can be attributed to ABC's erratic scheduling and ineffective yep. advertisement campaign. Rather than focusing on Superman, Agent Carter presents a character-driven drama about a normal human being who inspires as she goes above and beyond to better the world. Yep. Aided by strong writing and a capable cast, Agent Carter bowed out with a cliffhanger and a movie cameo. But the premise could technically be revisited at any time. Nothing to say. No quick comeback. Number two, Constantine. Okay. All now, from what I'm hearing, he's about, he's supposed to get a new series or something. I'm okay. For the most part, the Arrowverse has been a resounding success. However, DC fell just shy of batting a perfect game. Distributed by NBC and following a chain-smoking demon hunter's various the wrong dealings, network, world, man. Constantine was comfortably the darkest live-action DC series out wrong of the network, bunch, which made the show a poor fit for the network. Reviews were not overly positive, but Matt Ryan lives and breathes John Constantine. So much so that the actor has reprised the role numerous times on DC's other shows, including Legends of Tomorrow's cast. Clearly, Constantine is worth not only keeping around, but perhaps even bringing back from the dead. You're jealous. You don't have learned to handle it when people around me die. Not quite at the end yet. Almost there, though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. All right, back to business. Number one. <laughs> I should have known Daredevil. 
Daredevil's coming to the MCU. No doubt about it. First to be canceled was Luke Cage, followed by Daredevil, and then a double whammy, Jessica Jones. Well, why don't we just put all the MCU? Despite mostly positive reviews, these created for Netflix series based on Marvel characters of the same name found themselves on the chopping block after only two or three seasons. Daredevil hit the streaming service first, and almost immediately captured the attention of subscribers for being a thoughtfully produced origin story, thanks to its attention to the source material, thrilling action, and high production values. With multiple award nominations and a fresh tomato meter score for all three seasons, its cancellation was a huge shock. However, it's being rumored that Disney Plus could revive the series, and possibly other canceled Marvel properties, so here's He's, hoping. They're coming, in, they're coming in the MCU, I guarantee you. Cage, Murdoch, and Mel. Hang on a minute. <laughs> and that's not Marvel's fault, that's Netflix's fault. Alright. Not a bad list. Um, I wasn't going to cut it, I was just like... Not a bad list. Um, some of the shows on the list, I could have... They could have stayed gone. They could... Look, I don't hate Teen Titans. I liked it, but like I said before, when it got it got too comedic for me at times. When they had the episodes that dealt with like Deathstroke and that kind of stuff, and it got kind of that that good tone of what I was reading of Teen Titan. When it got when it got to the tone of like the Marv Wolfman and George Perez run, that's when I was loving it. Like when brother when they brought in Brother Blood and all um the Hive. Those were I like when they did all these comedic episodes. I was like, nah, that's that's all right, man. I'm not, I'm not feeling that. Um, and then and Teen Titans Go doesn't do it any better because that 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 I can't stand that show. I, I cannot stand that show. I'm good. Damn it. Um, I can't stand that show. Um, as for the, the Netflix show, that was a shocker to us all. I think it wasn't a shocker when they canceled, I guess you could say, Iron Fist. I was like, okay, that was probably the weakest out of them. I, I love Iron Fist, don't get me wrong, but even I'll admit like that, that show was weak. Season 2 was better, but I don't think it was enough to save. So I'm like, alright, we're going to see that go. Fine. Then Luke Cage guy, I was like, son of a bitch. Then... Punisher goes, son of a bitch. Then they said Daredevil and Jessica Jones. What the fuck, man? So I'm like, and then everybody's going into crazy mode, like, oh, Marvel, look what y'all did. What's the Marvel's fault? Netflix did that. Netflix did that, not Marvel. So. When these characters show up in the MCU, and trust me, they will, because the only reason why they can't now is because of the Netflix clause. Marvel can't use those characters until 2020. 2020 ain't, ain't nothing but a few months now. And gar I guarantee you, those characters are going to show, and the first one is going to be Daredevil. And you know where he's going to show up? In the next Spider-Man movie, I guarantee you. I'm, I'm, I'm putting a guarantee on that one. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm guarantee you. Peter's gonna need a lawyer. Who better than somebody who looks out for the little people? And one of his oldest friends in the comic books, Daredevil. Why not? Believe me, we're gonna see it. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, what do you think of the list? Did y'all like it? Uh, link in the description down for Watch Mojo's channel. It is what it is.